Welcome to ACMA Info Night. Things look a little different this year, not just because of pandemic, we're also in the midst of major construction. And I'm talking to you now from a school where you might attend in the fall of 21. But before we get there, we have an online presentation for you. So without further ado, ACMA Info Night. If you're here now, you probably know a little about ACMA, enough to be curious anyway about who we are and whether this might be a good fit for you. You may have seen an art show or a performance, heard a concert, seen our dancers or actors on stage, or even visited an open mic night. And we are all of those things, but as much, or even more, ACMA is what happens before the curtain goes up. We're the caring community who builds sets, rehearses, and engages in the creative process of making art. We're also a school where academics matter, and whether it's hands-on science in the hallways, learning to write in English class, studying a language or learning history or math, we're a school where students can get their academic and artistic needs met. Walk down the hallways and you'll see dancers, sculptors, artists, and students making connections. ACMA is a place where students can be themselves and be part of something great. Just over 700 students attend ACMA, drawing from all corners of the Beaverton School District. Students are on an A-B schedule, with four classes each day. This means a sixth grader, for example, might take social studies, supervised study, math, and a sixth grade wheel on A days. And then the next day, take language arts, science, personal fitness, and another wheel on B days. We have AVID as an elective, and on Wednesdays and Thursdays, all students meet with their ohana, which is like a homeroom, and have access to the, any of their teachers during access time. We have two lunches, mostly divided middle school and high school, and every student is assigned a Chromebook for the year. A dozen buses bring our students to campus early. School begins at 7.30, and the buses arrive earlier than that. We end the school day at 2.05. As a 6th through 12th grade school, we often get asked if middle school students and high schoolers have classes together. For 6th grade, not much. And for core classes, students are mostly divided by grade level. For some of the others, particularly in the arts electives, we see some mixed grade classes. And we see this as a strength. Students can attend ACMA for seven years, just like Hogwarts. And we see our program as a seven-year continuum. We get to know students, and students get to know staff and peers so well in those seven years. Most of our teachers teach both middle and high school, and that familiarity can be fantastic. Heck, you wouldn't stop reading Harry Potter after Prisoner of Azkaban. Our core academic classes include a variety of English classes, including English electives. History options, including advanced placement classes. Lots of hands-on science and math up through AP Calculus. High school students can take Spanish or French. And anyone curious can go on our ACMA website and look for the Academic Program Guide. It's here that you can see course descriptions and get a sense of the classes, academic and elective, that we offer at ACMA. Among these classes is a robust offering of theater courses, including acting, theater design, and tech theater. Several levels of dance, from introductory to our pre-professional dance company, Dance West. Jazz, orchestra, and choral music at a variety of levels. 2D and 3D art. The variety of art classes at ACMA is something we're proud of. And we're proud that we're able to offer courses from painting to printmaking, sculpture to book arts. We also have photography, and one of the only actual dark rooms around, design, and art history classes. And not to leave communication out of the mix, it is in the name of our school after all, we have a full slate of creative writing classes, and we publish an anthology and arts magazine every year. We also have a strong film program and a growing animation department. The arts are the focus, and placed at the core of all we do. We hold our students to the same standards as all BSD students, but take a different approach to our work, including deliberate artistic themes embedded in all our content areas. 
ECMA isn't easy academically, but we do our best to bring creative, creative approaches and creativity to all that we do. Because students should be academically and artistically prepared for college or a career, and should be able to laugh too. At ACMA, we embrace the unexpected and always do our best to make time to play, laugh, and allow ourselves to be silly. We live in stressful times. And while we take education seriously, it sometimes helps not to take ourselves so seriously. So don't be surprised if you see spontaneous acts of play in the hallways. That's our assistant principal in the blue costume in the photo. That said, students who thrive at ACMA don't have to show up in costume. We see that most come here because of a deep connection to the arts, a willingness to see challenge, and an ability to work hard. This last year, physically separated from each other by the pandemic, has underscored the fact that we are united by our interests and our passions, not merely by our location. And that location, well, it's changing. When we left our old building to come to our temporary home at Timberland, a student gave me this drawing, and I think it's truer today as we've put together this online info night than it was even then. People think that ACMA is gone, she wrote, but they're wrong because of one thing. We are ACMA. We are ACMA. And when we return to campus, our new campus at our old address, that creative spirit, those connections, and that sense of community will be just as real as it always has been. Three years ago was our last in the original C.E. Mason Elementary building on Center Street. We loved the old building, even the Quonset hut that we used as a cafeteria, and the portables that housed some of our classes. But over the past two years, as we've been at a temporary location and watched our new campus rise from the ground, we've gotten more and more excited about the new building being built for ACMA. With amazing facilities for music, art, and dance, bright classrooms, updated science labs, and expanded performance spaces, all still under construction right now, this new campus at our Center Street home will be an amazing place for students. It will open in the fall of 2021, ready for the creativity of our students and the care and encouragement of our staff. That staff, seen here in simpler maskless times, is the heart of our school. And it will be them who welcome you to the new campus as soon as it's safe. Now, I've done my best not to read you slides in this presentation, but this one's worth reading. It's our mission statement, and it goes like this. Arts and Communication Magnet Academy's innovative, innovative educational community engages all students and staff in achieving academic and artistic excellence. We ignite the human need to create and question by honoring both the unique characteristics and the interdependence of all the disciplines of study while weaving a rich collaborative tapestry of experience. If that sounds a little corny, that's okay. Sometimes we're a little corny. But the truth is that we believe it, and students and staff who call ACMA home are okay with purple prose like weaving a rich collaborative tapestry of experience. We do that weaving together every day. And what does it look like? Well, it's a little different than you'd see at a comprehensive school. We don't have a football team or any sports at ACMA, though students can and do play athletics at boundary schools. We have a fantastic homecoming, but it's not centered around athletics. We have advanced placement classes and lots of subjects, but as a small school, just don't have the numbers to allow every AP class you might see in a school of 2000. We're not a neighborhood school. Instead, we draw students from attendance areas of every comprehensive high school in Beaverton. We see this as a plus, a great opportunity for students to meet peers who share their love of art, even if they live on the other side of town. We're not a comprehensive school, but we do what we do well. And what you will find at ACMA is students who are curious, creative, and kind. We have high expectations and open minds, and we strive to create and maintain a welcoming environment for every student. I, I know this is a lot of information, and I know it's still not everything. As you learn more about ACMA, I'd encourage you to find out all you can and engage in honest conversations as a family. Check out ACMA's website for more information, our Facebook page, and maybe even my Twitter account. We're proud of what we do here, and we do our best to celebrate that work and play publicly and often. I think that as you visit us online, you can get a sense of who we are and how we do 
what we do. Because the purpose of this info night, such as it is, is to help you make the best decision for you. We know that ACMA is perfect for some students, and Cedar Park is perfect for some students. Sunset is perfect for some students. Beaverton, Mountain View, Conestoga, and ISB are each perfect for some students. It's not about getting you here. It's about you finding where you will be home. So I'm going to invite all my prospective ACMA students to take out an imaginary pencil, hold it up in the air, and tick off the statements that feel true for you. I love to read and I love to write. I'm not afraid of working hard. I love being around different and interesting people. I want to try new things, even difficult things. I like the idea of exploring subjects deeply. It's exciting to me. I'm nice. He hasn't mentioned art yet. It's coming, don't worry. The arts define me and have always been an important part of my learning and understanding my world. And making art matters more than where I make art. If that's you, fantastic. If it's not, that's perfectly okay too. And now is the time to be really honest about whether ACMA sounds like the place you'd like to call your educational home. We want you to be happy, feel supported, and be in the right place. And it's a conversation worth having as a family. And if ACMA is it, well, we encourage you to apply. We bring in half of our new students through lottery, and then the other half through what's called second consideration. What this means is you can submit your application right now, and any time before the window closes on December 11th. The district will conduct the lottery and inform us, and you, of who gets in during a, this randomized first round. If you get in, great. If not, don't worry. Once we know the outcome of the lottery, we invite every student who applied but is not yet in to come to a second consideration. It's at this time that students share a bit about their chosen art pathway, dance, film, art, music, meet with the teacher, and share their interest in attending ACMA. We need second consideration applications by January 11th. Now, when we're in person, one of the best parts of our info nights is the question and answer time that follows my little song and dance. We always invite students to step up to the mic and take questions from the crowd. And even though we're having to do all this from farther apart, I'm going to turn the presentation over to our assistant principal, Kulia Ferguson, who has gathered some students and staff to answer some of the questions we hear most often. Welcome, and this is the Q&A portion of our info night, school information night. And we have four, six, six, I can't count. <laughs> <laughs> we have six students who are with us and um, I'm going to have them introduce themselves. But first, Margaret and I are going to introduce ourselves. My name is Kalia Ferguson. I'm the assistant principal at ACMA. And I am um, Margaret Fitzgerald and I'm the principal secretary and um, yeah, here at ACMA. Yeah. So tonight what we're going to do is I'm going to have each of you introduce yourselves and then we will ask you questions and you will respond as a student at ACMA who has experienced what all of the people watching this video um, are experiencing right now. And so we want to have you answer your truth and um, give them some information to help them make decisions on whether ACMA is the right place for them. So um, why don't we go ahead and start. Please give us your first name. Um, what grade you are in, what grade you came into ACMA, and what your pathway is. Hi, my name is Katie. I am an 11th grader and I joined in eighth grade and I am a visual artist, so I like draw and paint in that pathway. I am Sydney. I am also an 11th grader and I have been at ACMA since sixth grade and I don't have a pathway, but I focus on vocal music and ceramics. Hi, I'm Corinne. I too am an 11th grader. I came here in the ninth grade and my pathway is creative writing. Hi, I'm Kate. I'm also in 11th grade and I've been here since sixth grade. My pathway is writing. Hi, I'm Dia. I'm also in 11th grade. I came here in ninth grade and I'm a dancer. 
Um, hi, I'm Jonah. I'm in 12th grade. Um, I got into ACMA in eighth grade and my pathway is photography and drawn paint. Awesome, thank you guys thank very you. much. So let's go into the first question. Um, first question is, how hard is it to fit in if you're coming to ACMA as a brand new student who isn't a sixth grader? And since you're all high schoolers, so think about it back when, if you came in in ninth grade, how hard is it to fit in coming in not as a sixth grader? I so, personally, sorry, I just say that the community is really, really accepting. I came in nervous in ninth grade, only knowing two people. And just of the first month I had a whole like group of friends. Um, it's almost like, you know, your, your friends know people who know people. And even if you don't know anyone coming in, the community is just, like so nice compared to other schools that I've gone to. Um, so I was able to make friends really fast. Um, yeah, just adding on to Corinne, I came in knowing one person and not even that well, it was just an acquaintance, but I made friends really easily. I remember my first day at school, I met Katie and she was super sweet and helpful and like helping me find my way to classes and stuff. So it's really, really easy to make friends because people are they're really friendly. And I came in in eighth grade. So like, I remember being a little nervous on my first day because I just came in from school where I didn't know anybody. And like everybody said, it's a very accepting school and the teachers make sure that you feel accepted and welcome and the students are accepting and welcoming as well. So I think it's really welcoming. Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. So um, you wanna go ahead? Yeah, I'll ask. Um, Every once in a while, we'll get this this question from the audience. Normally, is are your classes hard? <laughs> so, how about uh, Katie? Go ahead. I guess it all depends on what classes you decide to take, because it's different with everybody. Like, I know a lot of my friends are taking like AP classes, uh, pre calc, like all that advanced stuff. And there's also like you know um, advanced like art classes and advanced like pathway classes. But I think it all depends on like what kind of a person your student is and what kind of classes they decide to take. Um, it all like depends on what they're comfortable with, but just normal classes like the ones that are required, I'd say they're like moderately easy. Like they challenge the students to work hard and they still give you a lot of work, but they aren't like overwhelming where you're like at the point of extreme stress or anything. I see a lot of head shaking. <laughs> is uh, Sydney, do you wanna input there? Yeah, so I'm taking several AP classes this year, and I will say they're hard, but they're not unmanageable. The amount of work expected is reasonable for, you know, a higher level class. And even in just general classes, they do require some work, but they're not unmanageable. And teachers really listen. So if people are struggling to catch up, they're very generous to give you extra time or extend deadlines. Jonah, do you want to say something? <laughs> I think um, I'm going to add a little bit of what Sydney says. Um, I've been taking AP classes through my entire high school experience. Um, I think what maybe the students might challenge the most is balancing the arts with their academics. Mm. So it is mostly that in which, um, for example, some, some people might be incredibly involved with theater. I see this a lot in the theater pathway where um, they got a lot of performances. And sometimes they might fall behind in school. It's just kind of trying to find that balance between the arts and the academics because they're both equally as important. Really great. Corinne? Also to um, add on to Jonah, I remember when I was first coming into high school, my parents asked um, like, well, they were thinking, I don't know. I mean, it's an art school. What about like the math and the science and the actual academics. Um, but when I came to ACMA, I mean, the science program is great. Math program is great. And there are teachers who really care about you and your mental health and where you come from. So I just really wanted to say that too. Like I've had a great experience with my academics. Um, and yeah, the teachers really help kind of push you on the right path. Yeah. I'm just adding on to the teachers really being caring for your mental health. I think because right now we're all kind of stressed because we're all in like distance learning. I think every single teacher has been really, really good about checking in with us on a daily basis and 
giving us more time or lessening the workload when they've seen that we're overwhelmed. So I think they're really, really good about that. Kate, what would you like to say? <laughs> I'd just like to add the back when I was deciding whether to go to ACMO or a different school when I was um, choosing for middle school, I was torn about whether to go to ACMO because I really like math and science, but I've been here all the way up to my junior year so it's it's got a good math and science program too and that's not something you have to worry about. Thank you for sharing that I think that's definitely um, a question we get a lot too. Mrs. Ferguson, do you want to ask the next one? I will. So um, this is a question that we've heard and um, are kids really nice or is that just a rumor? <laughs> Anybody want to share? With I don't, you? Go ahead, John. Sorry, I don't think it's a rumor because I think what pe what makes people here really nice is that we come from different backgrounds and it's a small school. So we get, we have known each other for years and it's not hard for us to include other people into our groups because it's so small. And therefore we might as well relate to something, whether it's being like, you know, maybe previously before ACMA, you might have felt like an outcast or just a little group of outcasts here at ACMA. Um, that's just how I like to call it because all of my friends came not from really horrible situations but like they kind of never shared an interest with anyone else at their previous school so that's why I think people are nice here and they're also very sympathetic because it's like a big change and standards change and so on. Cool thank you. I'm not sure who is next, so I'm gonna go with <laughs> Dia, because I just, it's hard to manage all these faces. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, just adding on to what Jonah was saying, I remember at the middle school that I went to, I was one of the few students there that seriously wanted to be a dancer, but I also wanted to do like a science career, and a lot of students didn't understand why I would spend so many hours in classes or in rehearsal instead of going out to games or whatever. So I think coming to ACMA, that's the normal. Your artistic passion is the normal and it's really accepted, which is amazing. Cool. Okay, Corinne, you're gonna jump at me if I don't pick you. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, another thing that I really wanted to add is the community is so nice. And I think a, a big reason about that too, kind of tying into the making friends thing is when you choose like which art pathway you wanna do, you have a lot of classes with people who share your same passion. So you can just connect and relate to like a lot of things um and again like yeah people can really relate to each other um and everybody that i have met in my writing classes and just in my other classes are nice so it is not a rumor okay and sydney so i was really worried because i came from uh being homeschooled sit through elementary school to acma so i was worried that everyone would have this big thing in common they all went to elementary school and a lot of them went together and it was so easy to fit in and make friends and everyone is just they're really nice and they notice if you're having a bad day or if you aren't sitting with anyone at lunch and are really welcoming and inviting you to come sit or hang out with them or join their table in class and it's just a really good feeling to be noticed. Cool. Well, thank you. Ms. Ms. Uh, Fitzgerald, you want to do the next one? Well, Margaret, you're muted. So most of you um, have, I, I shouldn't say most of you, I should ask if you have a pathway, if you would like to um, answer this question, um, well, first of all, if you have more than one pathway and what it is, and then also, um, can you change your pathway? Say you get to ACMA and you all of a sudden discover you really like something else more and you'd like to change that pathway. So if you could um, answer some questions and we'll start with Katie. So I haven't changed pathways myself because I've always found that I've liked visual arts. But with a lot of my friends, I have noticed that they decide to change pathways halfway through the year. And that's completely fine. Like it, 
works well with your schedule and I feel like it's an easy change for you to do. I do recommend doing it earlier on, but it's like you can make that pathway change at any time you want. And I think that's what's so nice because ACMA gives you like a bunch of different options. And I'm not sure like answer my question to anyone else if you know this, but like earlier on, don't they give you like a lot of opportunities to try out different pathways to see what you like? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do that. So like it kind of allows you to see what you're comfortable with and it allows you to kind of make that change, I feel. Okay. So Sydney. So that was something that I really had trouble with. I got through ACMA through auditioning for vocal music and I had this thought, I don't know how I got it, but that I had to stick with that and it would be a betrayal if I moved. <laughs> but I fell in love with ceramics and realized that it's totally possible to do both. You might not necessarily be able to achieve two pathway endorsements, um, but it's totally fine to be able to do multiple pathways, switch your pathway, change things up, or just take classes for fun. That's a really good point. I like how you, I've heard that a lot of um, someone taking a ceramics course and falling in love with that. So I get, I understand that. So uh, let's see, Dia. Um, so as a freshman, I started out trying to do a double pathway with dance and filmmaking. And I got pretty close. Like I decided to drop the filmmaking pathway my sophomore year just because I wanted to go professionally with dance and that took, takes up more of my time. But it was totally possible. I was able to get, I think I only had like one more class left to get like an endorsement. On top of that, I also, I took a bunch of classes for fun. I took photography for fun. I took art history for fun. So the, you do get a lot of room to choose a bunch of different electives. Great, Jonah. Um, coming from like the visual arts perspective, I think that there's so many, like if you have some sort of performance arts kind of pathway, there's some classes that other pathways will like have the same requirements. Like um, for mm -hmm. example, photography and um, drawn paint have multiple requirements that are similar. Mm -hmm. So it's sometimes easier to get those pathways done. It's not, you don't have to do an extra stretch. Like, yeah, you might have to take other extra classes for maybe photography, or for painting, but both of them share like art history, drawn paint one, and so on. So it's, mm -hmm. I, I think it, for me, it wasn't so difficult to do a double pathway because they shared a lot of classes in common and same goes with ceramics or drawn paint and or filmmaking and photography. Yeah. It is, it is possible. Yeah. And just so you know, it's, it's not required that it, you do a pathway. Um, but it's, it is um, an extra little boost to your um, diploma and what you can share with colleges that you've done um, at ACMA. One thing I just wanted to mention really quick um, was, cause I do a lot um, with second consideration and I'm not sure we'll ask that question um, soon is um, if you came in, come in through second consideration and not the lottery, we do ask that you stick with your um, pathway that you were selected with, at least for the first year or so. Um, that's because maybe um, a band director has selected you for to play the trumpet. Um, so they're kind of um, hoping and expecting you to be there that next uh, fall to support their program. So, yeah. but okay, Mrs. Ferguson. Okay. So the next question comes, I'm sure, because, you know, comprehensive of our neighborhood high schools have after school activities, um, you know, teams, you know, sports, a whole bunch of clubs, et cetera, et cetera. So a good a question that usually comes about is, are there any after school activities at ACMA? Anybody want to go first? Okay, Dia. Um, well, there aren't any sports teams at ACMA because we are an art school, but there are, there are a lot of after school clubs. There's like an LGBTQ club, there's swing dancing. I can't, there's like, I don't remember what it's called, but there's like, just, I think right now we're doing like an ACMA community club thing. Yeah, did we have lacrosse? I, there was something like that. There's lots of different clubs. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them. There's like climate change and like a green club. Sydney and then Jonah. We also have lots of like 
organizations you can join so you can be a part of NHS. I know all of us here are parts of NHS. And so through that, you can do all sorts of volunteer things after school. And there are lots of theater performances that even if you're not a theater pathway person, you can still be in them and they are really fun. Jonah? Adding up to that, there is a or like organization just like NHS. There's one for visual artists called NAHS. I'm the president of NAHS. So um, they give we give you a lot of opportunity to meet artists outside from ACMA and uh, multiple opportunities to expose your art even outside or inside of ACMA. We used we before quarantine we had something called ACMA Spectacular where you could um, showcase your art and um, there's Art Is My Voice where it's like an only, like the only event that I know that ACMA has for visual artists and um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and the other thing, just because I know this comes up as well and, and you may or may not know, but they, even though we don't have sports at ACMA, we get out a little bit earlier. And so the buses take you back to your um, neighborhood school which is where students can participate in sports. We have uh, we had a student who participated in sports their entire you know soccer their entire high school career um, at their at their neighborhood school. And so if you want to participate in sports or in clubs that we don't have, the bus system and the way you know they pick you up at school a little early and get to the neighborhood schools um, before they're done allows kids to be able to participate in the things that we can't offer. Um, for after school. So that's just some more information for that. Okay, Margaret. Okay. So um, the next question is, um, if you came in through second consideration, remember we talked about that after the lottery is conducted and those that did not get in through the lottery, um, they do um, can choose to apply for second consideration, which is kind of like an audition process. And so if you did um, and were a part of that process, could you explain um, a little bit what it was like for you to come in um, during that process and um, do your audition and maybe what you auditioned for? Um, Corinne. Um, I came in uh, through for writing, creative writing. Um, and I do, I remember I was really nervous. You basically come in to the building. I don't quite know how it's gonna work this year just because of COVID. Yeah. Um, and you sit with another group of students who are also there for second consideration for the same pathway. And then you're going to be like led into a room personally for the writers. Um, we got to sit down and fill out like a smaller survey and turn in our, we had to do a little writing piece. So we turned that in and the teachers there are gonna like look over your piece, assess it. Um, but the whole time we sat there, we filled out a survey, kind of learned more about what creative writing or just writing in general will look like at ACMA. And then we left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Katie. So I did second consideration for visual arts and it's honestly really welcoming. Like, I understand it's very stressful because it's like, oh God, I gotta like get this right so I can get into the school. But it's honestly a really welcoming environment. They usually have you like walk into the room and there's a few other students in there. And for the visual artists, they just said like, you know, like fill out your forms, but then you guys can just draw and hang out and talk with each other. And I think that like kind of relieves some of the stress for us because we were all a little worried. So getting to talk with others was really relaxing. And then like the teachers will call you up they're very nice and friendly and they'll kind of just ask you like, why do you want to be here? What do you think you could do like benefiting from the school? And you just kind of have a conversation with them. And it's really like, I think it's a really good experience. Thank you. Sydney. So I also auditioned and I also uh, have helped with auditions um, in past years. And I auditioned for vocal music. So you prepare your piece ahead of time and when you come in, I think in most of the things, there's a little survey for you to fill out talking about why you want to go to ACMA. And then it's a lot of waiting because you, you can only audition one person at a time. So, but while you're waiting for your turn, there are NHS students there um, who are hanging out with you. Uh, last year, we played a bunch of theater games and choir games with all of the students auditioning. And it's just, it's 
nerve wracking it to audition, but we try to make it as fun as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Dia. Um, so I auditioned for dance and it is a slightly longer process than the others that I believe I remember I was very, very intimidated, but basically you walk in and they'll, once you, after you sign in, they'll give you a piece of paper and ask you to write a short paragraph about just explaining what, who you are, the personality and why you want to be at ACMA. And then dancers do not need to prepare a piece beforehand. You just, you walk into the room, they'll give you your number. And I believe it starts with an hour long ballet class. And then it's normally followed by either like a jazz, hip hop or modern choreography piece that they'll teach to you there. And you just perform it a couple of times. And then there'll be like a short improv section. It's, it's not as scary as it sounds, I promise. And <laughs> the dance teachers were very, very sweet and very energetic. So you will have a lot of fun. And typically I've helped out with auditions and typically like the other students, they're very encouraging too. And I know it's scary, but you will be fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for encouraging them. Um, yeah, again, um, I think Katie mentioned with uh, the way we're, we just don't know how second consideration is going to work as of yet. Um, there will be still some type of audition process for that, but we just don't know how that's going to look at this point until we know we can come together or not. So, okay, Mrs. Ferguson. Okay, well, because we are an option school, this comes up because they've heard rumors about it. So what time do school start? What time do classes start? And when does it all end? I mean, I alluded to that a little bit when we talked about after school activities, but can you kind of give them an idea? Um, let's You're Sorry, really start with Sydney. <laughs> So when we're in person, we start at 7.30, yeah, 7.30, and we end at 2.30, and you get 30 minutes for lunch. There are two different kind of lunch periods for middle school and high school, though sometimes you get switched. Um, and in online school, we start at 8.30 and we end at 2.30, um, and you get a whole hour at 11 for lunch. So school does end um, in person at 2.05, 2.05, so 7.30 to 2.05. Yeah. Okay, anybody else? Um, you know what, we can just add, I can ask the next question, but it's pretty much adding to this. Does someone want to, how about Kate? How would you like to, tell me a little bit about the schedule and how many classes do you have a day and how does that schedule rotate? Um, and if, if you'd like to um, maybe say what it's like in person and maybe what it's like um, right now in our COVID times. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. In, yeah, in sorry. person. Wait, oh, I'm sorry, I thought they said Katie. Oh, I'm sorry. There's Katie and Kate, sorry. <laughs> you can go You're ahead, fine. Katie. You're fine, Kate. Go ahead, Kate. Okay. Uh -huh. So <laughs> we have eight classes per semester and it's an A day, B day schedule. So on A days, you'll have four, four of those classes. And on B days, you have the other four of your classes. And then one of those classes will, in middle school at least, will be a supervised study period. So that's just a time where you can do your homework, catch up on things that you need to do. And then your other classes will be your core classes. So those are academic classes like math, science, English, social studies. And then the rest of them will be electives, um, which are whatever art classes you want to take. And there's a pretty broad range of what those can be. Um, with distance learning this year, it's pretty similar. We have four classes on A days and four classes on B days, um, but we have Wednesdays for Ohana. We have Ohana in person too, but on online school, Wednesdays are only for Ohana where we just check in with a teacher and it is that same teacher through your whole middle school experience. And then for high school, you will have one teacher for that whole time too. Great, thank you. Anybody else wanna to add to that? What is Ohana experience for you? Maybe as, I'm sorry, I'm kind of add, adding another question, but since um, that is part of our schedule is Ohana, it's kind of like a homeroom or an advisory. Um, Sydney, do you want to talk about that? 
So Ohana, at least in my experience, has been really fun. We've had the same teacher and a pretty similar group of students since sixth grade, though it does change as students leave and come. In general, if you're there for however many years, you're going to be with the same group of students in the same class. And it's a really nice place to kind of not only meet people, especially when you're an incoming student, but also to just hang out and have fun. And it's a good opportunity to talk about class things or as you get into high school, you start talking about colleges and what that will look like. Thank you. Dia, did you want to add anything? I think Sydney pretty much covered it because I know for me, Ohana was one of the places that I did meet a lot of people and just understand how ACMA work is like how capstones and access and that kind of stuff. I, that's where I figured out how the school system really worked here. So that was really helpful. Good. Thank you. This is Ferguson. Okay, um, this is an interesting question um, because it talks about, um, am, I the, am I in classes with kids only in my grade? So thinking about all of your classes, um, wh who's in your classes? Uh, let's go with uh, Kate. All right, uh, it depends what classes you're taking. Most of the time, I would say you're in classes with people of multiple different grades. When I was in sixth grade, I was mostly with sixth graders, but after that point, electives are usually mixed. Um, depending on what core classes you take, those are probably gonna be mixed. And um, you, it's pretty easy to move up in levels of math if you wanna take harder math, which will mean you would be taking it with students of a lot of different grade levels. Sydney? Uh, yeah, so a lot of your classes will be with multiple grades, especially in high school English. There's an English class for ninth and 10th graders and one for 11th and 12th graders. But in some of your electives, you can take electives with anyone from seventh grade to 12th grade all in the same class together. And I think it really helps build a stronger community because you're getting to know people who are from every age, from lots of different art forms, and who've been at ACMA for varying amount of, of time. Thank you. Anybody want to add to anything or have we, have we covered it? <laughs> Kate, uh, something I'd add? just like to add that when I was in middle school and I learned that classes were combined with grades, I was kind of intimidated that I would be taking art classes with upperclassmen, but they're really not intimidating. Like the they'll help you. And then sometimes they're newer at your art form than you are. So it's not as intimidating as it sounds. Thank you. Good, good point to make. Margaret. Oh, did Corinne, did you want to add something? I'm sorry, I saw a hand. No, I was just scratching my face. <laughs> okay, well, you can do that too. Okay, <laughs> Margaret, go ahead. <laughs> well, it kind of goes on top of this last question that Mrs. Ferguson asked, but do middle school students, and I know you're upper level, um, but do you get picked for plays or can they get picked for plays or other performing arts in middle school? So um, Corinne, do you wanna answer that? Or be yeah. one of the people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even though I came in in the ninth grade, I'm really close friends with a, well, he's now an eighth grader, um, but middle schoolers have a, a, a large amount of opportunities as well to be in shows and be in plays. Sometimes we have um, plays, I mean, there's lots of them at certain times that are just for high schoolers. And then we also have plays that are just for middle schoolers. And they're both held as like at the same level of importance. They're both, you know, a really big deal. Um, and yeah, so I don't want any middle schoolers to feel like they might not be in plays or plays don't matter, especially if you're in the theatrical department because you'll have a lot of opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else want to add to like Sydney? I know you're in vocal um, talking about when you were younger, maybe. Yeah, so I especially in some of the classes that I've taken or performances that I've been in where there's people from grades above and below me. I was really relieved to find out that there's not any there's not any um, preferential treatment. So like if you're a si seventh grader or a sixth grader in a show with high schoolers, just do your best and you are going to be given the same opportunities as other students. It doesn't have to do with how old you are. It has to do with the vision for the show. 
And so you can get just as many opportunities if you're newer to some sort of like theater and performance arts. Uh, some of the middle school only plays can be really great opportunities to get to know other middle schoolers as well as perform. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, in the dance department, every year we have a recital, which is everyone in the dance department from sixth grade all the way to 12th grade. Yeah. And so that's, that's a really amazing. good opportunity to perform with ACMA. And also you can audition for Dance West if you want more performance opportunities. That's a good way to just get more practice and more experience with performing. Thank you. Jonah, how about in um, some of the visual arts? Um, are you, you know, um, so do you see the younger kids coming into some, probably not in the higher levels that you might be in, but maybe when you first came to ACMA? Um, if you mean by like, do you mean by age difference or like grade yeah. difference? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I came here in eighth grade and I believe I was in Greek in art three or something. <laughs> and there were some high schoolers um, and some middle schoolers, like some high schoolers, like in their certain pathways, they need like a certain drum paint class. Mm -hmm. And so you might see seniors in drum paint one, which is what a lot of freshmen high schoolers take for their um, drum paint pathway. Um, and I've seen some, like sometimes I've seen like middle schoolers and maybe a little bit of high schoolers going ahead of the game and being in, um, I've only seen a, like a few juniors in AP art, even though it's like a 12th grade class. Yeah. So I think it is very possible to do that. I didn't get the chance to like get ahead in the game, but I've seen mm -hmm. multiple people that I have done that and have taken like AP art twice, which I'm like, I applaud you. Um, and I've <laughs> seen, um, yeah, um, in a lot of drum paint classes, you might see seniors taking that class for um, like rec um, like a requirement or printmaking. So there's like a lot of variation and like, it's not really intimidating. Um, it just kind of gives you more insight on like the class itself. And a lot of seniors have this tendency of at least adopting one freshman like they will come to like this freshman and will not leave them alone for the entire rest <laughs> of the year. It's just an unspoken rule. Like it's just kind of like an informal adoption process where a senior will just kind of see a freshman it's like, huh, oh, this freshman has potential. I'm gonna just um, keep talking to this freshman and kind of becoming friends with the upperclassmen. I've seen that a lot because whether it's in performance or clubs, they kind of are mixed in together a lot. So it's kind of unavoidable kind of being in classes with different great levels. So yeah. Great, thank you. Well, and that actually leads into the last question that we have. And we've sort of alluded to it because some of you mentioned it before in some of your answers, but um, Good thing for people that we want to know is, um, are there advanced level classes, honors, AP, or IB? And what kind of classes do we have at ACMA? Dia? So there are a lot of opportunities for advanced level classes. There's there are a lot of AP classes. I personally, I love the AP history classes. They're a lot of fun and they're a lot of work but it's, it's manageable and teachers are helpful. And there's a lot of room for advancement than like your art pathways, like in dance, especially there's three different levels, there's beginning, intermediate, advanced, and you can move up pretty easily if you work hard. <laughs> so. Okay, Corinne? Yeah, um, I just wanted to add with like AP or IB classes, um, there's, I mean, there's a good amount, like Dia said, we have uh, AP history, classes um there's AP math AP um what what am I trying to say I literally AP English that's the word <laughs> um there's <laughs> there's lots of advanced placement classes and lots of opportunities to kind of get the credit I think we might have lost Corinne nope there she is okay Jonah, did you want to add something? I had, I know you had your hand up. 
Um, yeah, um, I think we have multiple um, kind of, not only just AP, like I think it's very usual for like our freshmen to start with AP world history. Like that's what I've seen the most. That's what I started with. So like once you start high school, that's the most usual class that I've seen people take. Um, and it's really fun, very engaging. The teacher is amazing. Um, there's also a push, AP calculus, AP stats, um, AP art. Um, but there's also like in core classes, whether it's biology or maybe English 910, the teacher will give you an opportunity to boost that up into honors. Like they'll give you, I don't know if it's an honor credit, but it shows, it shows in your report card as an H as in honors. Um, so yeah, they do give you um, those opportunities. Excellent. Thank you for bringing that up because yes, um, the core classes do offer the honors option and basically it's for anybody who would like to do go deeper into the core subject and then you do get that honors designation on your transcript. So anybody looking at that transcript will go, oh, they've done more and they've gone deeper into that subject matter. So yeah, we do. We have a lot. Well, I think we've come to the end of our questions. You all have been so fabulous. And again, we thank you so much. You, you definitely give back to ACMA um, as much as you've gotten from ACMA. And I'm so happy that you were here with us today. And thank you again. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. we'll see you later. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and so we're gonna continue with question and answers. Um, the kids were awesome. Um, and, but there are some questions that just the adults need to answer because we know better. So one of the first questions that we usually get is, um, are there buses? Um, and yes, there are buses. And how that works is in the morning, students are picked up in their neighborhood and transported directly to ACMA or through a portal at another school. So they will get on a bus. They could come directly to ACMA, but they could also go to another um, option school, switch buses, and then come to ACMA. It just depends on where you live in the district. Um, in the afternoon, what happens with the buses is students will go from ACMA and they will go to their neighborhood school and co connect with a bus there to go to their home in the neighborhood. So there are buses from home to school, back to home. It's just the process in between that changes up depending on where you live in the neighborhood. Another kind of logistics question we often get is about lockers. Up until we tore the last building down, ACMA never had lockers in its decades of history. Here at Timberland, they have more than enough. And when we move back to our new building, there will be lockers there. Uh, we're still working on the total number that'll be in and the process that we'll use for students to apply for one. We know that some high school students don't really have an interest in them. A lot of our middle schoolers do, and we want to make sure that those who want lockers have the opportunities to get them. Okay, another question is, why do my sixth graders can't, why can't they select electives? Um, well, we, what we do is we put them in a sixth grade wheel. And it is a opportunity for our, our sixth graders to experience all the art forms here at ACMA. So every nine weeks, they will rotate through a different elective cycle. Um, the examples of some of the cycles that we have this year are dance six, art six, theater and drama, band six, intro to creative writing, and choir six. We also have um, a question that comes up is, can my sixth grader take a language at ACMA? The answer to that is not a formal language, but what we do in the sixth grade wheel is we have a culture class that's been added to the wheel that allows them to experience and get a, get a feel for what cultures there are in our world today. So many questions are being asked right now is how does the lottery process work? Um, the application window is now open um, and the deadline for online applications is December 11th at 4 p.m. So um, you would want to go to the district Beaverton School District website under learning options for the online application. Um, if you happen to not reside, or excuse me, if you do not have a student ID number currently, because maybe you're going to a private school, but you still live within the Beaverton School District boundaries, you would need to do a paper application, and those are also on that same website. 
Um, the notice of the lottery results um, will happen via email from the district office on December 17th. That will be the same time that you can start applying if you did not make it through the lottery um, to ACMA that you could apply for second consideration. Second consideration is um, like a audition process that we have. We do not do sibling um, uh, priority. And so all of our second consideration is done um, with auditions. And that will happen mid, sometimes midtime in January, but the deadline to apply for that is January 7th at 3.30. Um, and then those notifications will be emailed out on January 26. So again, um, you do need to apply for second consideration if you did not get in through the lottery. And, um, but if you, um, unfortunately, you know, if you are unfortunate not, not to get in through the lottery or second consideration, um, don't worry, you're still in um, a wait pool of names that can be accessed. Um, but again, you do need to live within the Beaverton School District boundaries to apply. Thanks, Mark. Mm -hmm. Once we have our students on campus and we know um, moving forward at the start of the year who's with us, parents often ask how they can be involved. And there are lots of opportunities. Sometimes we have opportunities for classroom volunteers, certainly chaperoning dances and social activities we have throughout the course of the year are a good way to do it. And then also getting involved with our PTO, our parent teacher organization. They meet every month and uh, they're a great group of resources, whether it's to raise money for the, for the school or whether it's just to have a place that parents can talk. Uh, you're all in this together and you're having a shared experience of raising an ACMA student and um, sometimes just having a kindred spirit is a really helpful thing. The other question we often a have asked of us is how do we stay informed? How do we know what's going on? Uh, you know, we have a weekly electronic newsletter, our Monday message, and a more thorough monthly newsletter, Hello from ACMA. Both of those are kind of standard ways that you can get information about what's happening at the school. And I'd add to that, that we update our website and the calendar that's on the website can be one of the best resources as you try to plan the month ahead. And then we also try to be active on social media. So posting on Facebook, uh, sounds confessional, but I tweet, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and putting our information out, celebrating what our kids are doing artistically and academically and uh, as a community. So those are some things to keep in mind. Well, that's our info night. To all of you who are thinking about ACMA, we look forward to your applications, we look forward to meeting you, and we look forward to learning with you at our new campus. Take care.